The Central Bank of Nigeria has donated over 2 million bags of fertilizers, which is worth a whooping 100 million naira to farmers in an attempt to reduce the rising cost of food. Now, this looks so needed as the food inflation for the month of February climbed to 37.92%. We take a look at how this gesture by the Central Bank of Nigeria can influence the costs of getting foodstuffs and by extension reduce the food inflation figures for the month of February 2024. Welcome to Market Square. My name is Uluwak Pelubi, uh, where, and as always, I'm glad to have you join me on the show today. Now, what you have mentioned is that at close of business yesterday, the 20th of March 2024, the Nigerian Nera appreciated by 0.87%, meaning that $1 exchanged for 1,583 Nera. That's on the Netflix market. While on the beauty change market, you have it that Nera appreciated by a whooping sum of about a um, percent of about 4.61%, closing at 1520 naira per dollar. The Central Bank of Nigeria made a substantial contribution to the agricultural sector by donating over 2 million bags of fertilizers with a total value of 100 billion naira through the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to farmers during a ceremony in Abuja. According to the CBN governor, the donation corresponds with the fundamental objective of both the Apex Bank and the Agricultural Ministry, which centers on food security. Now, he also mentioned that the initiative not only profoundly impacts the livelihoods of all Nigerians, but it's also aimed at reducing the rising cost of food. Take a listen. While the CBN has been implementing comprehensive measures to curb inflation, it is evident that in the short term, the inflationary pressures may persist. We are delighted to announce the allocation of 2.15 million bags of fertilizer, valued at over 100 billion naira, which we are humbly handing over to the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security. Now, this news came barely 24 hours before the inflation report for the month of February was released by the Bureau, National Bureau of Statistics. And um, the report has it that the inflation rate for the month of February 2024 stood at 31.70% relative to the January 2024 airline inflation rate, which was about 29.90%. Our spotlight today is on the food inflation rate. Because food inflation rate was set to climb to around 37.92% on the back of high, averages, high average prices of items like bread, cereals, potatoes, yam, other tubers, fish, coffee, tea, and cocoa. Now, this represented a 13.57% increase from what it was, which was 24.35% recorded in February 2023. In the month-to-month -month analysis, February 2024's food inflation rate was 3.79% higher, showing that um, things got higher than what it was in January 2024. Now, this increase in month-to-month -month food inflation can be said to have been driven by accelerated price growth of, um, of bread, of cereals, of potatoes, of yam, and other tubers, you know, fish, coffee, tea, and cocoa. On the show today, I have a guest that we will look at the, um, this together and also look at how effective the distribution of fertilizers will be to stem the food inflation price um, going forward. We, are, we anticipate that the food prices in the month of um, April should go lower. But we'll look at this with my guest on the show today. Um, he is an agriculturist and also an environmental consultant. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Oloni Moyo Eri. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Kwelume. Good afternoon, Nigerians. All right. Thank you for coming on the show once again. Thank you so much, Thank you. All right. Now, uh, to go straight to the point, the food inflation for the month of February 2024 rose from what it was and rose to something around 37 percent 
What do you think are the factors responsible for this food inflation? The figures from February. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, food inflation, uh, the present um, figures we are, we are seeing, we are having now uh, uh, was was a long time com coming. We have been predicted that we would um, get into what we have gotten into now because a combination of factors have contributed to it. Firstly, we must talk about the hike in fuel prices. Uh, you know that it appears that it's one singular thing that once it's... Um, it uh, goes up in the country. Every other um, thing goes up. That's on, that's on one side. Then the sliding of the naira against the dollar also um, uh, complicated the situation. And then you'll know that over the last seven, eight years, Nigeria is about um, is a vast agricultural lands because of insecurity. You go to Benue, that is um, known as the food basket of the nation, Places like Plateau State, where people farm, um, the, their output is. In the recent time, we're hearing enough a lot of farmer herders clashes and the rest, and so on and so forth. So all of these things, and you also for, you also don't forget that there was the flooding. I think it was two years ago in the country. Um, all of this have um, all worked together to bring us to the level of inflation we have now. We have now. And, and I think I connect to that very strongly because for many people, many, many persons are not even surprised to see the figures. Some persons felt it should, it should have even gone higher than it has at the moment or that was published. We can only hope to see, hope to see what will be said of the month of, Feb of March 2024. Now, the CBN, in an attempt to help stem the cost of things a bit, have donated something worth around 100 billion there. To be very exact, they've donated over 2 million, 200 million bags of fertilizers to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. And um, I want to ask you, how do you see this supply of fertilizers? Um, and how important is this supply at this time? Yes, uh, I'm just um, a bit... Uh, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm not that amazed. I think we keep doing things the same way, and we all, and we expect very very different results. And it won't happen that way. Uh, there, there's always a problem when if a, a government agency based in Abuja wants to sit down Abuja and wants to um, have a nationwide effect on the country, it cannot work that way. And for somebody who has a little insight into how some of these things work, when the CBN released that kind of um, number of bags to the um, um, if, if Federal Ministry of Agri, then you now start hearing some powerful forces in that ministry cornering some some amount of those bags. That's what usually happens. And then you see maybe some one or two people, highly connected people, corner these things. The end users, the originally intended the people who should benefit from these things, might not get to access it, and that's the truth. But I, I will also tell you that the people who should even benefit from it might not even hear about the news, might not even know that um, the CBN has has, um, has done has released that kind of um, 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 gesture to them. That mm. is where we are. If we want to actually sort out the food crisis in the country, the major way to sort it out is massive food production. And how do we work about massive food production? We go to the grassroots. Don't, see, we must also, I also forgot to mention that part of why we have a the increment in hike in prices of food is also the, the role some very funny middlemen play. You know, the role that middlemen play also. And maybe what the, whatever the government can do in the coming months to maybe regulate the middlemen a bit might bring down the price a little. But if we really, really, we are really talking about massively encouraging um, 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 food production, we must cut out middlemen. And you see now, CBN wants to give fertilizers, it's going to Fertilizers of Agri. Fertilizers of Agri also will go through some, some kind of people again. By the time they are through with the whole process, I tell you, the real farmers would not, barely, not, yes. will not even know how the, the fertilizers look like. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, you might be very surprised that you see these fertilizers uh, selling the market at um, subsidized uh, prices at the end. You see that? That's what will happen.
Now, I think you just preempted me there because I th you, ha you have spoken my mind in a way. But I, I want to ask you, um, just I, I want a yes or no response. Do you think this gesture by the central bank is a good gesture? Do you think that this is a good gesture? <laughs> It is not a, it is, it's not a good one. No, no, no. No. Okay. Because okay. this same central bank, mm -hmm. this, because this same central bank ran the uh, anchor borrowers program, ran a lot of agricultural programs under the former administration. And I'm not sure they're able to properly account for how some of those things went. So I think it's about time central banks still um, take their, they must take their hands off directly um, um getting involved in things like this because the truth is eventually by the time you look at what what to bring that from this kind of enterprises you find that that is just another means to divert resources and to just document that we did some things let's end up back hands of this we don't for me i don't want a central bank that is distributing fertilizers no <laughs> let, let, let's let's channel to proper government <laughs> instruments that are meant for that yes Okay. Now, now, now that they have they have uh, disbursed these bags, over two hundred million bags of fertilizers to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture to help distribute this. Um, so we would say that now they've disbursed it. How, what what kind, what's the chain of distribution you would recommend from who to who? I, I think you also mentioned about middlemen taking out middlemen, but can we actually take out middlemen because you need somebody to be in the middle? to get what you want to deliver to the people on, in, in the grassroots areas? What do you think? Yes, um, if, if, we had had, um, um, if we had had a system where uh, records are being kept of, I mean, profile or database of real farmers are being kept, maybe at the Federal of Agriculture, it would have been easy to go directly to them, cutting out middlemen. But the truth is we don't have data. That's the truth. We don't have this database that can help us. But again, if, if the Federal Ministry of Agri are very serious about it, they should run it through the states. And when I say run it through the states, I'm not talking through state government because that's another kind of funny middleman also on their own also. Run it through the states in the sense that in all of these states, there are um, what I want to call associations, farmer, farm associations, verified farmer um, associations. These are people, they know themselves, they have their farms, these things are verified. In fact, if they want to co uh, conduct an audit, you also know that in, in every state of the Federation, there is um, an office of the Federal Ministry of Agri across, across the country. So let them go go to these places, to these farm associations, get the names, verify the farms, you know, get the uh, um, um, necessary farm records and dispatch directly through the Federal of Agri and their various state offices to the farmers. They should not go through uh, some other funny links or somebody in uh, somewhere else also in Abuja. If they do it that way, it will not even get anywhere. That's the truth. It will not get anywhere. So the way it is now, On those states, there is Osaka. Um, on those states, uh, agricultural commodities association. If you get if you get to meet them, then they have their farmer. They have their list of, of farmers. People are registered with them. They, that they, they who have verifiable farms, who have things that they are doing in the farms, and their and their names are recorded. They can liaise with people like this to recognize actual farmers. But if you run it again through this, what you see is just civil servants who never even get to the farm, um, getting themselves enriched with um, um, can't get just like this. Wow, that's that, that's so profound. I think you, you mentioned now that um, some recognized as, as associations of farmers in different states should be consulted and contacted to to get the package. I think that's a that's a very good way to go. So I know that um, in 2019 I was in a quiet bomb state and I found out that I went for a meeting one time for Poultry Farmers Association and I saw the room full of yeah. people and you, they, they have the track record, they have their phone numbers, they even send them happy new month messages yeah. every single time. So I think that's a, that's a route that could be taken to ensure that these bags of fertilizers get to the right people. But we know that we live in a country where everything is being, there's always an attempt to odd things and resell. So to, to break from that, what would you recommend that we do? Should we arrest anybody who is caught odding these fertilizers? What would you recommend? Now, now uh, I, I, I 
think w where we are as a country now is where it has become a free for all. The corruption tendency has become a free for all. Where for somebody now <laughs> in that kind of ministry, they are happy now <laughs> that wow, this is the time to eat it big. <laughs> 200 bags 200 million bags of fertilizers and they are wondering wow okay uh, how do we rebag some of them are thinking just i'm just i'm just people i'm just painting a scenario not something that actually happened oh wow how do we rebag these things and get these things to the market some people could even go as far as um, smuggling them out of out of the country to neighboring countries that is how bad um things can be that's the truth I mean, we we have we have had the we have seen where government distribute rice for palettes, and you go to the market and you find the same rice in the market being sold. So you're wondering what's happening. So that's where we are. But how do we checkmate these things? Mm -hmm. but yes, if the government also can um, provide uh, law enforcement agents who can track the movement of these uh, um, resources, two hundred bags of fertilizers. You already, we already have, we already number them. We know the the bags of fertilizers, and then to now do to now ensure that oh, if you're taking it to all of that six states, how many is going to each state, or government by local government basis? Because let's not kid ourselves. Some places, some local governments are much more prominent in farm in them um, um um in 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 farming in food output than others. So if we are going by that local government by local government, let's know. How, how many bags are each of the 774 local governments? And then let's track these bags to those various local governments. Let's have pictures. Um, let's have records of people, the final end users. You know, these are things that um, if, for instance, it was the World Bank or the African Development Bank that was sponsoring these things, they don't joke with their money. Mm -hmm. They will ensure that they follow it to the logic i mean to, to, to ensure they follow it to, to, to a logic uh, uh how would i put it to a reasonable conclusion that yes their resources have been well expended but when we say government money central bank everybody just jokes hey nothing will happen but i think government must also be ready to expend resources to ensure that these bags are monitored till the final end point and where there are hearing officers or diversion they should be made to 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 to, to face the full lot of the law Absolutely, absolutely. Monitoring has to come in into play here. There has to be solid monitoring of the distribution of these bags to the farmers that actually need these resources to ensure that we have more food and the price of food comes down. But um, I want to ask you, what are the groups of farmers that should be prioritized? Uh, we have, we know, we have stable food and one that we go to every single time we yeah. want to eat. So um, what group of farmers should, we, should be prioritized in the distribution of these bags of fertilizers? Yeah, thank you very much. That's a very good question. You know, it, it was recently, it, it, it ran out in the news that the ASDB is also trying to do every, doing everything to help Nigeria with uh, food production. If, I don't know if you it, if it came across that news item. Mm. And, uh, and thankfully, we have one of our own as the president of the uh, African Development Bank. And I want us to take to take a cue for what they are doing. They are majoring on rice, maize, soya beans, I think, and wheat. Four major crops, but these are the major crops that um, we can say is largely consumed by the, by Nigerians. Maize. In fact, maize is so, the problem with maize is so serious that there's a, there's a stiff competition for, for maize between man and animal. Do you get? Mm -hmm. Poultry needs, needs maize heavily. Humans also need maize heavily. Um, and so, so uh, even, even detail, not just only maize, um, um, if you look at rice also, and even wheat, and so you have these are things that even animals also use in their diet. And so if we major on these three to four um, crops, like AFDB is also planning to do, and if those are the kind of farmers that you are targeting, it will be fine. But the question is, farmers, farmers that were not mobilized in the first instance to go into that kind of cultivation, mm. giving them fertilizers now, 
will those fertilizers be used for what we really want them to use them for? Or will those fertilizers be used merely for the subsistence level of farming that they are involved in? So that's why I feel that dispatching fertilizers now, it has to be a complete program. For instance, CFDB said that they want to, starting from March, they want to um, ensure there's cultivation of maize and the rice and the rest. That's the first lap. If AFDB now is going ahead to release uh, fertilizers, we can understand that they have engaged people who have started a, a certain kind of production mm -hmm. and they are not dispatching the, the specific fertilizer because not all fertilizers can be used for all kinds of crop productions. So fertilizers are specific, you know, crop specific. You can't just use any fertilizer just anyhow for just anything. So that's why I feel that just randomly waking up and say you are just using fertilizer. That's why I felt it was not a good idea. Have an issue. But if the, if Nigeria is serious about food production, we should be targeting rice, maize, soya beans, wheat. Those ones we should be targeting them seriously because the bulk of what you consume is from those same crops. Wow. Thank you. Now, um, a question that I, I think is on the mind of many people watching this right now on YouTube and those listening to this right now on Spotify is that uh, with the way these bags have been released to the farmers to ensure that they use this, they use the fertilizers to uh, do what they, are, they have to do with it. And then we expect that the price of food should drop. I want to ask you, should we expect uh, by the end of April, because the, uh, the inflation rate for the month of March will not be available until April. So should we expect that now that the bags have been distributed in March, we should begin to see the impact of these bags disbursed in April? <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> if there is any slight reduction in inflation, it has to be maybe because the government has been able to maybe checkmate some middlemen here and there, or Hello? Yes. Are you still with me? Yes, yes. Hello, are you still with me? Yes. Yeah. So uh, all it all it attributed to maybe whether the Naira has appreciated a little against the dollar. That's what we can, that's where we can have maybe minor drop in inflation. But we are talking of significant drop in inflation. We have to maximize this rainy season. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm. Because we did not get here in one month. We will not get out of this in one month also. This rainy season, this is the time when this is the time the food basket of the nation, Ben we must wake up. And this is this is not even the time when we should be saying there's a lot of kidnapping, there's increase in the insecurity in those areas. This is when the place should be completely peaceful for people to go and farm massively. Because when there's insecurity, everybody just does could go there to go to do the little they can do. I can and I can share a little experience with, with you from here, here in Akure. Mm -hmm. I, I also do a bit of farming also in Akure here. And I can tell you that there are farmlands in Akure here where people go and by the time around this time everybody's wrapping up what they are doing and they are trying to leave the farm. Why? Because nobody wants to be kidnapped. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Nobody wants to be killed. In our career, in Ondo State, I can tell you for I can tell you that for sure. And so everybody is just doing the little they can do. But some people cannot even dread entering into some farmlands. They just do what they can do within the suburb. I mean, they made this the main main part of our or uh, main part of the city, maybe behind their backyards or abandoned um, community lands that is within reach of every eyesight of everybody. But to go into the real bush farm now. I mean, you have to go think again and again. And if that is happening in in Ondo State, can you imagine what will be happening in, in, in Benue State? Can you imagine also what will be happening in Plateau State? Now, Benue State, for instance, has the capacity to do all year round farming. I've traveled through Benue State before. And when you are passing through some place in Benue State, left, left, right, left, right, you see farmlands, massive farmland on both sides. If these people cannot farm and take advantage of this raining season, then we cannot wake up and say we want to get out of inflation immediately. Because basic from basic economics, when there is abundance, the price will drop. And if we are not pushing enough 
product into the market if farmers are not have not been unleashed to push much more into the market then there'll be a problem especially now that it's like the spending the, the purchasing power of people has dropped now the average farmer is struggling to is barely struggling to see enough money to farm how is he going to push out um enough um, produce and take a of this rainy season so a lot of factors are there and i think doing government must do something much more significant if we are going to drop the inflation significantly well, yes well I th- you know fertilizer is, is supposed to improve growth and the productivity of plants yeah. and i guess that's the reason the cbn has thought it wise to disburse bags of fertilizers to the federal ministry of agriculture to ensure that they're able to dispose disburse these bags to farmers to um, to apply it to their crops and all of that. But again, um, the point is, what then is the point of disbursing bags of fertilizers if we, if we may not see the instant impact of these bags disbursed? I want to ask you now, um, given what you have said already, it means that we cannot just dis- disburse bags of fertilizers alone. We also we need to put the, um, security in place, check the security part of the country, and ensure that farmers have the confidence to go to the farms to farm. Is that correct? Certainly, certainly, okay. certainly, certainly. Uh, yeah. So, given 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 what you know about fertilizers, can, can I go ahead on you? You, you still want to? Yes. Ask? Given what you know about fertilizers and you know the agricultural space, uh, <laughs> when somebody, when a farmer, for instance, is given um, a bag of fertilizer to apply, um, how soon can we begin? You know, we are giving more persons now at once. How soon can we expect the price of foodstuffs to reduce in the market? Um, June, July, how soon? <laughs> when they start applying these fertilizers? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm trying to say now. <laughs> but the, the intervention of the CBN appeared to just be a random approach, not a well thought out, a calculated approach. Not, you know, for instance, if you have a flat tire, there are sequences of action that you must take. I mean, there's a sequence of actions, Mm. sorry, that you must take, Mm. Um, um, including trying to ensure that um, you you have uh, maybe something to 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 uh, in front of the tires to keep it um, to keep the the vehicle stable, Mm -hmm. and then getting your wheel spanner Mm -hmm. to loosen the bolts and then um, the jacking the vehicle. But if somebody comes and the first thing it does is to jack the vehicle before loosening the bolts. You see that there'll be a problem. You just carry out an action, and if it's not complemented by, and it's not in the right sequence with the other kind of actions that will take place, it will just be as if we are deliberately using some opportunities, some some of these uh, uh, um, opportunities to waste money deliberately. Mm. And it's not wasting money, it's embezzling money. Mm. Because if there's one thing Nigeria does well, does so well now, is we have found legitimate ways to embezzle f- uh, funds, public funds. Hmm. Public funds to dive funds. That's the truth in this country. That's where that's why we're where we are. Because if a farmer, you're asking a farmer to use fertilizer, you mentioned what kind of fertilizer is that? Not all fertilizers work for various uh, kind of um, crops. And then if you say if we want to, we want to use it to help if, if 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 I mean a farmer, the question is: Did they tell us that those fertilizers will be distributed for free? That's for, will it be distributed for free, or at um, a, a subsidized price? Uh huh. And then to who and who will these things get to? That's why I, that's why I tell you that these things do not necessarily mean much. Because a farmer who probably has not been mobilized to be able to clear his farmland, get um, get the right um, seed and the rest to plant in his farmland, then you give him fertilizer. What he was going to use fertilizer for? Fertilizer is what you had when cultivation has when cultivation has begun. But if there's no cultivation in the first place, mm. what, what do you use fertilizer for? So, I, I, I say again, government cannot wake up and just be operating with a scattered gun approach. Mm-hmm. There must be a systematic plan. And just look at what AFDB is doing in Nigeria also. You know, this is not, not rocket science. This is AFDB, this is this, what AFDB is doing in Nigeria. Look at the system, the approach they are following. See, they cannot just wake up today and do this. Then tomorrow, somebody else again will wake up and do this also. That's why these things, when we combine them together, they do not amount to much, to much, to much. 
So, so we must stop this arbitrary process of just waking up and saying we have done this, we have done that. Mm -mm, let's let's sit down. Let's be more measured. What I approach. So back to your question. Will it necessarily translate to a drop in inflation? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't believe so. But if today you tell me that maybe if the fuel, um, if our refinery start operating now, mm. prices that that one self on its own has has the tendency to bring down prices of 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 uh, goods and services, including food products, down to a minimal, I mean, to a, to a reasonable um, um, level than saying just distributing fertilizers. This is the first time fertilizers are distributed. Go and, go and read history. There's been a lot of these kind of interventions. Nothing really happens. Thank you. <laughs> you have shared unpopular ideas here on the show. <laughs> Mr. Lollimuyo Eri, thank you so much again for coming on the show today. Um, to our viewers out there, I, I trust you enjoyed the conversation, and I'm guessing you also have your points to share, turning things to say as to what has been discussed today. I do well to follow us on all our social media platforms, and I mean on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and let us know what you think about this conversation today. My name is Uluwa Kwelumi Awe. If I see you next time, keep doing well. <laughs>